Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R730 XD and specifically we're going to go over the memory and CPUs inside. Let's get rolling. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R730 XD. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, this is a, a 2U rack mount server. There's a couple of different types of uh, form factors. This one right here, uh, which is my personal favorite, is a 12 bay large form factor hot swap. There's also uh, two small form factor hot swaps that are here in the rear. Uh, you actually have to build that part out if you do want that option. Uh, there's also a 24 bay small form factor hot swap that also has the two in the rear. Um, and then there's a lesser known option that is an eight bay large form factor with 18 1.8 inch that you'd specifically have to put in the uh, the smaller SSDs to get that to work. And those are the different uh, types of form factors. Um, personally, my favorite, like I said, is the this one right here, which is 12 bay large form factor. It's just great for a, a storage application uh, that you could build out really actually pretty cheap nowadays. Um, so that's, that's my personal favorite. As far as the CPUs are concerned, there's two CPUs inside. It's an LGA 2011-3 socket, which means you're going to be using Intel Xeon E5 2600V3 or V4 series processors. I will note, you do need to update your uh, your BIOS to make sure that you could be able to use the V4s. People ask us all the time, like, hey, what, uh, what CPUs do you like? And really, it depends on the application. If you're looking for something on the low end and just get something really, really cheap, uh, the E5 2620V3, which will be two hex core procs, uh, that's, um, you know, really really the, the best just cheap low-end proc to throw in there. If you're looking more for like a value proc, I'm a big fan of the uh, E5 2660V3, the E5 2670V3. Uh, those are good um, you know, procs to get you a, a, a lot of uh, bang for your buck. If you want something more high-end, you can get uh, go into the V4 side and do something like a E5 2690V4, E5 2695, E5 2697, 98, 99, all those V4s right there are just uh, incredible processors uh, that realistically, um, if you want something that you can uh, still you know, put in 20 cores or two 20 core procs and get 40 cores, uh, because right now there is a server shortage, um, this is a, a great op uh, option to uh, build out a, a used server for realistically you know, a couple grand that'll um, you know, still get a uh, handle a ton of applications. You can still support VMware. To me, that's a, a great way to go as far as a high-end uh, CPU. As far as the RAM is concerned, it takes DDR4 memory. There are 24 DIMM slots inside. You can use a number of different speeds. You can use 2133, 2400, or 2666. I will note that 2666 will clock down to 2400, which is the true fastest speed. As far as the sizes are concerned, you can use a 4 gig, 8 gig, 16 gig, 32 gig, 64 gig or all the way up to 128 gig. But I will note the 64 gig and 128 gig only work with one type of RAM. What type of memory does the R730XD accept? There's two types of RAM. You can use ECC registered, known as an RDIM, or you can use load reduced, known as an LRDIM. With the ECC registered, you can max out using 2432 gigs for 768 gigabytes at 2400 speed. Now there's a noticeable um, uptick and a huge advantage to the LRDIMs because you can get four times the scalability and put in 24 128 gigabytes to get you all the way up to three terabytes of RAM, again at 2400 speed. So now that we know a little bit more about the uh, the different specs for the, the CPUs and the RAM, why don't we go ahead and open it up. We'll actually install the, the RAM and show you how to physically upgrade it. Um, this is really important if you're not maxing it out because you need to know which slots to put the DIMMs in to make sure that you're maximizing the overall performance. But before we do that, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and we're gonna go right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. First things first, just make sure your latch is set to unlock. Pop it open and lift the top up, pretty much like any rack mount server you've been in before. All right, so I'll uh, point out a few things before we get rolling. Um, just kind of the, the normal kind of standard stuff that you'll see. You're going to have your back plane, uh, all of your uh, fan modules. Uh, you have your air baffle or air shroud. Uh, which is going to be covering the uh, the two CPUs and all the DIMM slots, which is what we'll have to actually remove to be able to do this upgrade. Uh, you're going to have your Perk RAID controller over here. You're going to have your NIC card. Uh, they have a riser here to put in a couple of PCIe uh, 
cards you have your dual power supplies over here and then uh, also this is the kit we had mentioned that you need to be able to install uh, your rear SSDs um, or you know if you want to put SAS drives in there I guess what I have in here right now is um, two SSDs but if you want to install the two uh, small form factor drives uh, this is the kit that you're going to need here which actually does need four different cables so it's a pretty intense kit for this rear rear upgrade here so all right now we're going to go ahead and physically show you how to install the dims and how to access the uh, the cpus and the ram before we get going though i did want to point out the air shroud here it's um it's it's nice overall that dell has labeled everything for you so it might be a little bit tough to see on the camera but you can see on the shroud this is cpu one and this is cpu two and right here and over here, they have actually labeled all the uh, the tabs as well as far as what slot is A1 versus A2 versus A3 and A4 and so forth. So it's labeled there. And then once I lift it up, you'll actually see it's labeled on the motherboard and the tabs are all color coded. So it's uh, very convenient and easy as far as just being able to install these and make sure you're putting them in the right places. So now we're just going to grab right here and we're going to lift straight up and just put our air shroud to the side. So as we had discussed, this is CPU1 and this is CPU2. CPU1 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here and CPU2 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. Everything is color coded, so white as far as the tab right here is the uh, the start of the channel and you know what one other thing i wanted to do you don't actually have to do this at home as far as when you're doing your upgrades there is enough space to install the modules but to make it easier for you to see i'm actually going to remove these uh these air uh these fan modules so it's two um blue tabs right here and you just pull them up and you just lift it straight up i will note you'll see there's these uh, connectors under here so you need to make sure you lift it straight up now again you don't have to do that at home it is kind of helpful because look at all this extra space that you have to uh, to be able to install the modules um, but as far as just you guys being able to see everything I thought this might be a, a better view so anyhow okay so um, you'll see there's uh, all these tabs are color-coded so white is the start of a channel black is the second slot in the channel green is the third slot in a channel okay and this is important because um, if you are not maxing it out you want to have your dims in the white slots uh, to, to basically spread them across different channels and make sure all your channels are working and there's a nice even balance across uh, your load and maximize performance okay so i'm going to show you uh, which are the first tabs so this right here is a1 so that's the first channel and the first slot in the channel and this right here is a2 and you come over here to the outside this is a3 and this is a4 now i'm going to stop right here because i want to note and uh, and show you something that i feel like is important so we had talked about there's two cpus and cpu one has 12 dim slots well now you'll notice that there are four white tabs which means there are four memory channels per cpu and then there are three dims per memory channel. And this is really important because um, when we talk about you know, maximizing your performance, uh, the way that we actually sell all of our upgrades, if you go to our website and you were to uh, buy some uh, upgrade kits for your R730XD, um, we're going to make sure that you're putting an even balance across. So we're going to sell, for instance, four which would be like the four channels here for this CPU, or eight, which would be the four white slots across the two different uh, CPUs, or we're going to sell 16, uh, again, maximizing in a nice even distribution across all the channels. So that's the way that you should install them. Um, you don't have to do it that way. I mean, you can technically put in odd numbers, but that's the way that we recommend it just to have a good even, uh, even balance. So, all right, now we're going to keep on going. You go to the black slot right here. This is A5. A6, come back to the outside, A7, A8, go to the green, A9, A10, A11, A12. So it's really, really simple, and I'll, I'll do the um, CPU2 a little bit faster because um, I see that you understand the point, but so B1, B2, come back over here on the outside, B3, B4, swing back over here, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9, B10, B11, B12. So, and on, and it's all labeled on here. And really, honestly, it's a, it's a very easy thing to do. I always feel like uh, upgrading RAM is uh, one of the easier 
um, easier upgrades to do in a server. There's a lot of other things that could be a lot more complicated. So this is just really about making sure you're putting them in the right slot. So, okay, now let's go ahead and actually physically install them. Um, you will notice one of the things that I always like to do at tips, I tell people, I like to push in all my tabs in advance, uh, or excuse me, I actually like to do the opposite. I like to push all my tabs out in advance, um, so that way when I'm installing the module, um, I, I don't want to have the modules uh, fighting me. Uh, I don't want to have any issues when I'm in putting, them, putting them in that uh, they potentially fall out or tip over and knock off a capacitor or hit a dim slot or something bad happens just by being careless. So I like to just open everything up to start. Um, the other thing I like to note is you'll notice right here there is a notch in the middle. This notch is known as a key. Uh, this key is important because um, if you look closely, there's a, a black notch that sticks up inside of each uh, dim or each dim slot. And the problem with that is if uh, it's not perfectly in the middle, so if you have installed the wrong way, you could potentially damage the leads on the module or you could damage the dim slot itself. Neither are a, a problem you want to run into, so just simply line it up properly. So in this case, it actually is like this. And we're going to go ahead and do the first A1 here. And the other thing I always like to tell people is you'll notice I'm not holding the module. I've put the module in, uh, but the module is not fully seated, and this is a real common user error where someone will think that they've seated a module, but you want to hear these two clicks. And you'll notice the tabs that we, we keep talking about, how much uh, further out all these tabs are and how this is fully inserted. Um, and that's something I always recommend at the very end, check all of your tabs and make sure all of your DIMMs are properly seated, because if they're not, uh, then you're going to run into an error when you boot it up and you fire on your machine. It's going to tell you that uh, you know one of your DIMMs is bad, and really it's not that you have a bad DIMM, it's that you've not properly seated it. It's a real common error that we always tell people just to, to watch out for. So, so now we're coming over here to A3, and again you'll notice, and I'm stressing the point, but we're doing all the white tabs first okay now i'm actually going to go ahead and put in 2432 gigs on this machine but this would be the proper way to load it um, and if you were going to do uh, with two cpus again come back over to the white and put them in all the white slots okay now i'm going to fast forward and i'm going to completely load this up and we'll be right back all right so we have officially loaded this up to 768 gigabytes putting in 2432 gigs uh, this is actually for a build that we are doing for um, a data center out in uh, Virginia. So uh, one of the things I did want to note for you guys, um, you know, if you're looking for memory upgrades, we can definitely help you, but we do also build uh, custom configurated servers. Uh, we can do bulk, we can ship to different data centers, different colos. Uh, so if that's something that you're interested in, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Our team of ninjas would love to help you out and build some servers out for you and get you some great deals. And if you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this bad boy back together. So first things first, we're just going to uh, drop the fan modules back in. And this is fairly simple. I mean, you just line it up and then you're just going to push the blue tabs back down. The air baffle is really simple. You just need to make sure you're lining this up. Uh, properly and then just slowly set it down in case you don't have it lined up properly and then when you do the main side is always this left side sometimes with the cable just make sure it's nice and flush and then realistically put the top on and you're done so thanks again for stopping by and I wish you guys a wonderful day